on, Jesus, help us. waking up and um, I it's really foggy out here it's really foggy uh, you take a look the way it looks around here you can barely see the jetties there's a few uh, brave souls hardcore fishermen that decided to stay out here and camp out in their vehicles some of them with their families. Us, however, we slept in this Gazelle T4 tent right here, this brown tent. And uh, yeah, we had air mattresses and we did a little cheating there. However, I don't regret it at all. because I was comfortable. I'm also a CPAP user, so yeah, we had to have electricity, we had to have that generator going. Um, we had to uh, run on a full tank. Uh, I think we fired it up around 7 in the evening. And uh, it, we just let it run through the entire night. And it died on us around 6 in the morning. So that wasn't bad at all. That wasn't bad at all. Um, we brought it in. We had to bring it in because we thought it was going to rain. We felt droplets overnight. So uh, we went ahead and we brought it under the canopy. Uh, as you can see here. Uh, to give it some sort of protection. Uh, thank God we didn't have to worry about anything else. Uh, it, it, it didn't rain. Um, right now, the kids are inside. I'm sure they're still... A little chilly out here you know but they're they're in there i don't know if you can see them through there but uh the whole setup I have a couple of air mattresses and they're snug in their sleeping bags uh what's the plan right now the plan is to make some coffee Yes, I am going with instant coffee, doing the fancy stuff. As soon as we wrapped up breakfast, the weather started to change rapidly. The winds shifted to the north and we found ourselves rushing to pack up. All right, so, so there was a cold front that just pushed in and uh, had got us scrambling all over the place, trying to tear down Unfortunately, we weren't able to capture all of all of that action, all of that frustration, you know, getting caught in the rain, wind coming in, you know, uh, temperature change. Um, things just got a little hairy there at the at the last minute. Uh, thank goodness that uh, Mother Nature gave us a break, and we were able to sleep soundly all night. We were able to have a great breakfast, but sometime this morning, you know, this cold front, the, the winds shifted from south, south, I mean, from uh, east and uh, southeast, all of a sudden from north, northwest, you know? And so all this wind started pushing in and all this moisture and uh, things got, as I mentioned, a little uh, hairy there. It was great being out here. Um, and uh, we got to see some things uh, that were just different. 
and uh, I mean other positive things. I'm gonna I'm gonna let, leave it up to my kids. I mean I know for my sure for for sure like for me what was positive and what was you know what we could improve on, um, do things differently because that's what's gonna happen every time that you do something for the very first time in your life. And uh, so let me ask you guys, starting with Sammy back here, Samantha, talk to us. What do you think? How, what was the experience for you? Um, it was very peaceful out here. And even when you had to work building anything, the tent or um, just camp, I mean, it didn't feel like work. Um, the weather was pretty nice yesterday. It was really fresh. Um, catching my first fish was fun. And a pompano, you got a pompano. Yeah, I caught a pompano. And then among other fish that we had to, you know, take back into the ocean because they were pretty um, small. And so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I learned how to <coughs> build a fire. Kind of, sort of, <laughs> and um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really enjoyable experience, and I would definitely want to come back again. Uh, anything that we learned from this? Uh, anything you think we could do differently next time we're out? I feel like we were very prepared, very, very prepared. Um, I don't know if maybe check the weather next time. Make sure that it's nicer. Yeah, <laughs> things got a little nervous right now. We got into some very loose sand. So <laughs> that probably made you lose train of thought, Sammy. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> what else? Um, I don't know. I, I would say that's it. Robbie, what do you think? Positives and negatives? So the good things, uh, I mean, this was a whole new experience for me. Yeah. So I learned how to fish. I learned uh, most of the basics on fishing, like uh, tying knots and basically casting far away. I, uh, I mean, obviously I wasn't good at it at first, but I did more and more of it and I got better at it. And uh, it, was, it was pretty fun just learning how to cast and do well with that. I didn't catch anything, um, which, I mean, I could have caught something if <clears throat> maybe the fish wanted the bait, but today they didn't want the bait. Yeah, it was pretty rough. A lot of people weren't catching much. Um, other people around here uh, weren't really catching anything. There are several people that just went home without any fish at all. Absolutely well said. Uh, yeah, I mean, the people that come out here, most of them. If they don't come out here just to experience the camping part of it or just the four-wheeling adventure uh, they get out here to come and fish I mean these people we saw some hardcore people last night and even this morning that were roughing it those people were roughing it and uh, I mean my hats off to them that that was that was a uh, pretty pretty cool you know what they were doing um, but yeah even those folks were not having any luck. They weren't having any luck. They were having a rough time. Um, and many of them were just giving up. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this for many, many years. Been coming out to these spots for ages. And I think they know when it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. We didn't come out here just for the fishing part of it. Uh, for If that was the case, you know, you could save yourself a lot of money probably if that's what you really want and it's a one-time experience. And uh, if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe just spend money on a charter or a one-time thing where, you know, you had a wonderful experience with somebody that's, you know, that knows what they're doing and you're almost guaranteed to catch something for sure. Um, we came out here and we risked a lot, you know, by coming out here and, and uh, you know, just having a, a, you know, our own experience and learning from our own mistakes. Uh, Robbie, anything do uh, you think we could do, make it different next time around? Uh, so the setting up was pretty easy in the beginning. Uh, I guess taking it down, like, took a while. Um, 
<clears throat> also because of the weather it was mainly the weather so maybe like having a heads up on how the weather is going to be instead of just i mean guessing that it's going to be good or bad would be good uh <clears throat> since that will help us a lot like setting up uh to leave because i guess we set up at the wrong time because there's a lot of wind but uh, i think that would be good like knowing that <clears throat> first and yeah well i i agree totally um uh, yeah that <clears throat> that uh weather change uh threw in a variable in there now here's it oh, check out pelicans a to d time over here look at this that's pretty cool wow that's uh fly pelican fly here's a cool thing here's a cool thing some observation that i made i guess while we were doing all of these things this experience of uh dealing with this weather situation the change of weather uh got us into got us into this other mode of critical thinking Just using logic and what's going to go first what's going to go second how should we position the vehicle if the wind is blowing from the southeast we had positioned it in a certain way so that we could have our camp uh opposite of that and we could have the the gx you know uh blocking the suv was blocking you know the campsite so it kind of controlled the the wind situation there and uh that helped a lot when we were tearing down and some of these things that like you know tent and and other like other things that we were we were working on that were kind of uh i guess that we had to fold and uh things of that nature uh we found out use use the same theory right you you take it to the other side of the suv we took it to the other side and the wind was blocked there so we could fold these things in peace seems such it seems like common sense guys i know but when the weather's changing on you and you're trying to you know just you do the best you can i guess survive the situation and, and be able to to uh, tear down camp uh efficiently you know you're you're a little nervous you're you know you're not not at a hundred percent you're not sometimes you don't think clearly and you can get very frustrated very fast gx so far has just been cruising through this just cruising through this no big deal uh the vehicle has been acting like a dream man it's it's, it's just awesome I, I'm in love with this vehicle. It's just great. I'm in love with my wife, you know, but I, I really like this vehicle is what I'm saying. Uh, I recovered from that close call, but a different kind of trouble was coming up ahead. This is some adventure stuff right here. Uh, at least for me. High tide wasn't due until two more hours, but the surf was higher than usual. That, uh, hopefully that guy can make it through in the back. I think he did, he is going to. I'm also looking out for that poor guy. A newer Ford pickup truck had been waiting for me to take the lead when we left the cut. I didn't know him, but I kept a close eye on him as we made our way south. Look at this wet situation over here. Okay, looks like our buddy made it. Come on, Jesus, help us. This is, uh, wacky for me. This is wacky for me. First uh, hardcore fisherman in a nice uh, old uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. I was surprised to see that classic Toyota Land Cruiser. Those waves were too close for my comfort. Made that one. It's pretty crazy. That's very it's up. I thought the worst part was over, but another even more narrow segment of beach was up ahead. I don't see any tracks this way. I had to make a decision between the salt water and the path with loose sand. I decided to take my chances with the high road instead. Fucking chances over there and over here.
GoPro. <laughs> oh, choices, choices. I love it. So, is there more than one way to skin a cat? Is there more than one way to skin a cat? Yeah. I took the dry, the loose sand, and my buddy in the Ford over here that's been following me all along, he decided to, to just you know go through the salt water I don't I don't know which one's best I don't know uh, to me because I have max tracks I have a shovel I have a snatch uh, strap I have all these things and recovery points I had I felt confident going going the loose sand route because I wasn't sure how it was gonna be uh, with that water with that shoreline if you think, I don't know, what would you have done? I mean, obviously, you know, the Ford, you know, took the hard pack sand, you know, by the shoreline and things worked out there too. So, and for me, it was a breeze going through that loose sand. I had no problems at all. Um, nothing scary, you know, but uh, what do you think? You know, go ahead and comment, let me know. Was was that the best move, or, or did I screw up, or could have I have screwed up? Let me know. We continued south with no major issues until we reached the Beach Axis Six entrance. Another Ford pickup truck was having a hard time in the loose sand. He needs to straighten out his tires. My unknown traveling companion in the Ford truck and I pulled over to give him a hand. It appeared as if the four-wheel drive system wasn't engaged and the tow strap easily got him out. I ended up meeting the brave couple in the Ford pickup truck. We were all full of adrenaline and excited to share our story. Unfortunately, I had forgotten to attach the microphone with a windscreen on it and the strong winds made the audio impossible to use. I asked the driver why he took a chance going through the salt water. He told me he had been driving to the East Cut for years. I would rather go through the hard packed sand than take his chances on the loose sand like I did. He did, however, acknowledge the difference in dynamics between our rigs and felt like my vehicle might have a better chance going through the loose sand. Okay, here we go. Is this it? This is it. So we made it out safe and sound. All we had to do is go through the very here. soft sand at the entrance the of Beach Axis 6. Well, we survived this one. There's a Cadillac over there trying to come in. Do not come in, guy. Just turn around. This is not for you. Next time on Coastal GX, we'll take a closer look at what's causing our steering wheel to go crazy and how we fixed it. Thank you for watching. As always, we ask you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. More videos to come, so hit that notification bell.